All right, so we're going to look again at the um, two-state or two-level uh, system, I guess. So we have two energy states. We have one that we'll just call epsilon and one that uh, will be epsilon plus some delta, uh, where delta is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so this one's higher than the, than the other. <coughs> so first... Uh, Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, find the partition function and the free energy. Then we will uh, get an expression for the specific heat. And uh, then look at the low and high temperature limits of that. So uh, first of all, the partition function. Uh, we'll use the letter Q for that. Um, all right, so uh, this is just to the minus epsilon over uh, kVt plus e uh, to the minus epsilon plus delta over kVt. All right, so that's that. Uh, maybe we can uh, go ahead and factor out a, an e to the minus epsilon over kVt and then have a 1 plus e to the minus delta over kVt, whatever form you, you like. All right, um, the free energy, we'll use F for that. Uh, that's just a minus uh, kVt uh, times the natural log of the partition function. So, um, minus kVt, natural log of this right here. And why not? Let's um, go ahead and split this up. So uh, this uh, first term can be simplified a little bit. Uh, we'll just get a minus epsilon over kVt. Um, <laughs> plus the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus delta over kVt. All right, and why not? Let's give it one more step here. So um, these kVt's in the minus sign will divide out, so we just get epsilon minus kVt uh, natural log of one plus e minus delta over kVt like this. All right, so uh, just real quick, I mean, suppose we had called epsilon, suppose we'd said there was an energy level of zero and delta. Um, this works really well with that too, because then our, our partition function would just be uh, this piece right inside here and um, minus kVt, natural log of that, gives us the free energy again. So anyway, all right, so now moving on to the um, specific heat. So uh, we'll find the average value of the internal energy, uh, which uh, kind of do this weighted average with these Boltzmann weighting factors, epsilon e to the minus epsilon over kVt plus epsilon plus delta times E, uh, let's split this up, e, epsilon over kVt, E to the minus delta over kVt. All right, and then here we just have our partition function down here, E to the minus uh, E over kVt. 
let's factor it out again. Why not? Uh, 1 plus e uh, to the minus delta over kvt. All right. So we can clean this up a little bit more just by dividing out this e to the minus epsilon over kvt term. So we have an epsilon plus uh, epsilon plus uh, delta. And then we have an e to the minus delta uh, over kvt. And then a 1 plus e to the minus delta over kvt. <coughs> so maybe we can even clean this up more. Hmm? Uh, if we factor out this epsilon, we can have a 1 plus e to the minus delta over kvt like this. All right, over 1 plus e to the minus delta over kvt. All right, and then we have to have um, All right, did I mess up here? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, minus delta over kvt. Yeah, what I was afraid of is that uh, uh, this would uh, just turn to an epsilon plus delta, but uh, I think I'm, thanks to this one here, which I think we're good. All right, so this is just epsilon plus delta e to the minus delta over kvt over 1 plus e to the minus delta over kvt. All right, so here we go. All right, so uh, just real quick, let's check our limits. If uh, t becomes very, very large, then uh, we end up with uh, this goes basically to 1 and a 1 plus 1 on the bottom, so we get epsilon plus 1 half delta, which means that at very high t, the, um, the average energy is uh, epsilon plus 1 half delta, which means that half of our um, particles or little subsystems are in the upper state and half are in the lower state, so that's good. And then if uh, t goes very, very low, then uh, this top piece here goes to zero, and this whole second term goes to zero, and we just end up with the lower state. So the average energy of the whole system is here in the lower state. Everything's dropped down uh, to the bottom. So that's also good. All right, so to find the heat capacity, we need to take the derivative of the um, energy with respect to the temperature. Um, make this a partial derivative or whatever. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to change this real quick a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to just do is multiply top and bottom by e to the plus of uh, this exponent. So then we get a 1 on top, and then um, we get uh, e to the delta over kvt plus 1. All right, now I think that'll make it a little bit simpler uh, when we go to the integration. Okay, or the, the di differentiation. All right. Um, so. Now all we're doing 
is uh, this is a constant don't worry about that we get a, a delta here and um, just write this out real quick one plus e to the delta over k v t to the minus one all right so this minus is going to come out front um, one plus e to the delta over kbt now to a minus two okay so now we're going to take the derivative of the inside um, we'll bring down a, a delta over kb and also a minus one over t squared and then we have a, the, the exponential here so e the delta over kbt. All right, so I'm um, working through this. Let's see what we get. Um, so we're going to end up, oh, I, f I forgot this, uh, this other delta here. Just put that right there. Okay, so we've got uh, these minus signs. We'll uh, cancel out. We get a delta squared over k b t squared. All right, and then we just have an e to the delta over k b t, and then a one plus e to the delta over k b t. This and squared. All right, so here is our heat capacity. Um, In the low temperature um, limit, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, these exponentials will get very large. All right, so this one is going to be insignificant compared to this other one, or this exponential uh, term right here. Um, so then the, we basically have this exponential over itself again, but squared. So uh, the top will it is going to divide out and we'll just be left with the one on the bottom. Uh, so we'll go as this factor out front and then we just had one of these on the bottom or in other words a minus sign up in the exponent. Like this. Okay. Um, okay, so high T. High temperature limit, uh, these guys are going to 1. All right, so we have a 1 over a 1 plus 1 squared, so a 2 squared, so a 4, so 1 fourth. Uh, let's see, we'll be going as uh, delta squared over 4 kb t squared. All right, so what does this look like? Um, be honest, I do not have very good um, intuition as far as uh, these things go. For high t, uh, yeah, I can see a 1 over t squared dependence. So if we plot this with respect to t, you know, I can see, you know, here's a, here's a, maybe a 1 over t, and it's going to be steeper than that. All right, so... I don't know, just throwing stuff down here. Uh, I don't have very good uh, intuition um, as far as this, the low temperature part goes. I plotted it on a calculator, and yeah, it looks like some very sharp peak like this, and then, and then down, something like that. Uh, depends on what window you use too, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's some peak there, and then it and then it goes. I mean, I tried taking the derivative of this; it didn't offer too much insight to me either. Um, so yeah, I, I I guess I'm just not able to look at this and say, oh, oh, it looks like this. Obviously, um, 
But yeah, it looks, I guess, kind of like one of those Maxwell Boltzmann distribution type things you'd see a little bit. Maybe not if you if you plot them together. Maybe they're miles apart. But so that's roughly what it looks like. 